All right, and I don't care if during my presentation whatsoever, you all want to stop and ask me a question. The Red Cross provides so many services to the community. I particularly deal with blood services, but because I have been there as long as I have, which has been 35 years, I have learned a lot over the years and continue to learn how much the Red Cross gives to this community. Um, the Red Cross supplies over 50% of the nation's blood supply, which is part of what we do. We uh, have to make sure, my job is to make sure that every patient who needs blood gets what they need every day. We actually have a blood drive coming up here at your all school on the uh, Thursday, the 25th of April. And our goal here is 50 units. Finding out that you all have like 2,000 students 50 units is not a whole lot. Usually we try to target 10 to 20%, depending on what, you know, what kind of facility we're going to, a high school, a college, a corporation, a church. But we need our younger generation to support us by donating blood. Every two seconds, someone somewhere needs blood. In a trauma situation, blood can be transfused so quickly as we all know, everyone heard about the bank shooting in Louisville last year. We shipped 175 units to them at the hospital that day, and they went through all of it. The tragic part of that is that was using what they already had. The director of that trauma center told us it was just a great thing that we were so close so we could get the patients the products they needed transplants. I'm sure all of you all have heard of transplants. We had a liver transplant use over 150 products three weeks ago. That's one surgery. So our job is to make sure we collect in our area about 250 units a day. So imagine almost three-fourths or eight-tenths of our inventory went to one patient. So my job is to go out educate you all to help us out by donating. You can donate at 16 years old with parental consent, 17 without parental consent, but there are height weight guidelines for any students. Over the age of 19, it's 110 pounds. Under 19 years old, it's all based on your height and weight. The shorter you are, the more we want you to weight way. It's a volume thing. We have to make sure it's safe for you to donate. Everybody that comes in to donate gets a little mini physical where we check your temperature, your pulse. We prick your finger to make sure your iron count is high enough. Again, it's all about safety for you to donate because you're going to be helping someone else. So the whole process to donate takes between 45 minutes and or to an hour. We recommend that everyone eat before they come in and donate. And I do realize you're high school students, so a lot of times eating to you all might be a bag of chips running out the door or a soft drink or something, energy drink, whatever. When somebody goes to donate blood, we want them to come in very well hydrated and have at least eaten one good meal that morning, except we do want you eating, you know, before the blood drive as well, the first couple of days leading up to it. Everybody asks how much we take. We take one pint, average body has 10 to 12. We're not gonna take anything out of you that's gonna hurt you. When we collect blood, we draw the one pint, but what we do is we separate it into components. So every unit can go to three and possibly four different patients depending on what they need. I actually work with several cancer patients in this area two of them being young children in the same family, and I'm sure you all have probably heard of them, Ward's Warriors from uh, Hodgenville. I went and met with their mom, and she did a blood drive with us a few, if it's been a couple of months, in fact, we're getting ready to have another one. Within two weeks, she was able to get over 50 people to come in and donate. They know the importance of having the blood there when their child needs it. They also know the importance of 
us having to find that blood. The Red Cross is part of a national system, which is very beneficial because we have a national hub. So if we don't have what we need locally, we can reach out to our hospitals or we can reach out nationally and have the blood shipped to us. It's a huge benefit for us, but it's an extremely huge benefit for a family in need. Most of the time when patients need blood, it's not like we have one, two, three hours to wait on. We have to make sure that product is there. Again, you know, I live right, you know, live and work right near downtown Louisville. So all the hospitals are right there, a lot of our primary hospitals. So we can get them the units that they need. But when summer hits and our high schools and colleges aren't in session, actually you all are 30% of our blood supply. So you'll always hear us around Christmas and in the summer saying we're in a blood shortage. So that is why we come out to educate you all because donating blood is very safe and simple. Bottom line, it saves lives. Most of our generation of donors are older, so we need to get into the younger generation. We also offer a scholarship program here at the school. So the more units we collect, the more our scholarship dollars could help one of you all. So again, we need all of the help we can get. How many of you all are planning on donating next week? Do you know? Good. I'd like to see a lot more hands in this. How many of y'all are 16 years of age and older? Now, I'm not calling anybody out. I'm just asking questions. What would make you not want to donate? Mm -hmm. Just I'm just going to randomly ask. Um, every time, like the last time I got my blood drawn, I got Okay. Well, I'm sure. Okay. Just so you know. I don't know my blood type. And most people will not. That is, I'm glad you brought that up. That is not a routine test that doctor's offices do anymore. For one, it's a very expensive test. Usually, unless you donate blood, you will not know your blood type unless for some reason you were in the hospital and needed blood and then they would do that test. Again, and, the, and I'm not saying that because of the passing out for you, that's the most important. Eating and drinking will prevent all of that ahead of time. Coming in really well hydrated, eating a good meal. A lot of times people get nervous. So we are there to comfort you, make sure you feel comfortable. The students work with us and help us. So I was just curious. Um, I mean, if I had work later that day, my arm was sore. I left a lot of stuff. I would have a sore arm for a couple days. No, that's that. I know these are the things I like to address when we do this. If you do everything you're supposed to do ahead of time, you should be able to work, go about your normal business, do anything that you need to do before you came in to donate. Again, the most important is, important is eating and drinking. So as far as, again, the blood drive is next Thursday. You can sign up with Ms. Cheney's group. We need your support. I promise you, if you all saw what I see every day with some of our patients being small kids who have to have blood on a regular basis, it might just change your mind when these kids know how important it is for them to get the blood products that they need. So just think about it and consider donating. If you have any questions about the height and weight, Ms. Cheney has a weight chart. And, and I have one as well with me, so you can ask me when we're finished. But just know that, yes. What do you mean that it relies on height and weight? Like how tall you are versus, versus how much you weigh, versus how much you weigh. So is it like, so is that like how much blood you take, or is it like how, like? How, how who can you donate and who cannot? Again, after you're 19 years old and out of a high school setting, it's 110 pounds. But below that. We just check for safety issues for the donors. When I first came to the Red Cross, it was 110 across the board, and it, it changed probably, I'd say, six or seven years ago. So again, you know, we just want to be, make sure you're safe to donate. That's why we check your iron count as well. Um, is there like a paper or anything you like sign up for the drive? Absolutely, and you'll get that from Ms. Cheney's group. She'll, they'll be doing sign-ups and everything, and then if you're 16, you have to have a parental consent. If you're older than that, you don't. I'll get some of the papers from Ms. Cheney. Yes. Is there a blood type that you can't take? 
No. <laughs> we take all blood types. You will all us, always hear us in a, in, in a need for Opaz and Oneg just because they're the universal donors. Whenever ever there is a trauma situation in the field and air methods or one of the helicopter teams go, they always put O negative on board. I got to do an interview with Air Methods here. Uh, it's been a couple years ago and wow, did I learn a lot. My sister was a flight nurse for years, but you know, it's been a long time ago, but it was very interesting hearing how they depend on us and how we depend on them to save lives as a partnership. So is there any other questions about the blood process? Again, if you all have anything, feel free to ask me. The Red Cross offers multiple other services. We, when people have fires in the middle of the night, the Red Cross is there to help them. We make sure the family has what they need. If not, we get them what they need. If they need housing and they don't have anywhere to go, we will put them up until insurance is taken care of and we figure out exactly, because nothing's worse than going to a family fire and these people are out there with nothing. We are the, um, suppliers to the military. If the military needs us, we are there. Not only do we, as far as blood goes, we are the backup supplier for them. We also, if someone needs to come home or there's a family emergency, we reach out to the military installation that they are at. We communicate with them on if the person needs to come home now or just keeping them in contact with their families about the emergency situations disasters. They're all over the news. We're there in time of disasters. Our volunteers are like the most amazing people. These people pack up for a week, two weeks, months to go help people in need. Any kind of structures, tornadoes, the tornadoes that hit just what last week, the Red Cross was there. If it's providing shelter, setting up shelters, which we do have a shelter here at Pritchard, and I'm sure there's multiple other ones where we actually come in, set up cots, we organize the food, we do everything for these people because they don't need to have to worry about where they're gonna get their next meal when they have just lost everything that they have. And then we will help them get in touch with insurance, see what else needs to be done so we can help them. Again, a volunteering for the Red Cross, I don't know what we would do without our volunteers. Volunteers are the key to our organization. Every time I go to a blood drive, I go up and thank whoever's volunteering for me. They're giving of their own time, but what they're doing in their community is incredible. Volunteering looks very good on a college resume, a work resume, just to let people know that you want to be involved in your community and help them out. The Red Cross is there to do that. All you have to do is go to redcross.org. And if you wanna help with blood services, you can go to redcrossblood.org. You can help out at blood drives by s greeting people when they come in, just seeing a friendly face, simply saying, hello, are you here to donate? Let me get your information to serving them snacks in the canteen area, which is something that we supply all the snacks and you just kind of sit and talk to them about their donation. You'll hear a lot of interesting stories about who's used blood. How many people in here know of somebody that's used blood who's battled through cancer or anything? Yeah, I would think so. I would think so. More than you know of the person you're sitting, I'm a blood recipient of over half of my blood supply. On two different occasions, I have, my hemoglobin has dropped down to less than half because I have a very rare blood disease. I'm allergic to antibiotics and we didn't know it. And it's quite a few antibiotics that I'm allergic to. So during that time frame, it wasn't like I was bleeding externally, I was just destroying my own blood cells internally. After being at the Red Cross for the first time 10 years, the second time 20 years, I would have never expected to be on the other end of a blood bag. We call donating the gift of life. I truly felt life going back into me. It was unbelievable. I thought, well, that's kind of a silly little saying, but it's so true. So, I mean, the Red Cross is there all the time. We're here, we're visible in our community. We're there to help our community. We always could use help, especially young students, your all's age. People like to see the younger generation out in the community. They really do. You know, you'll hear the negatives that the high school students or college students do. 
but being a part of a team that does so much. Sure. Minimum age uh, requirement for volunteers? 16. 16. 16. Now, as far as traveling at disasters and all of that, I'm almost pos positive that's 18. Again, that's not the most, with me not being in that department regularly, I'm not sure, but I would say it's 18 years old. What kind of questions do you all have for me? Also, we do first aid and CPR classes, so we're always there to do those as well. So anyone that needs to be certified, all they have to do is call and find that out as well. So as a high school student, can I donate two units of blood or can I do You can do two. And what that's called is a Power Red donation, and I'm glad you brought that up. Power Red is where we draw two red cell products. It is a, uh, you're on the machine a little bit longer. We use a smaller needle. In the high schools, I'm going to be very honest, no offense to you girls, but usually we do target the young men in the school because, for one, most of them have a higher iron count, and they meet the height and weight requirements. And yes, you could do that. Like I said, it takes just a few minutes longer. Your uh, blood is, went, goes through a centrifuge and we only take your red cells and give you what we, your platelets, your plasma, and what we refer to as a bolus of fluids back. So there's no volume loss. When you do that, you can only donate every 112 days instead of usually you can donate every 56. I'm glad you brought that. Have you donated that before? I tried, they said no. Really, okay. But you're going to try this time. Do you know your blood type? I think it's O maybe. Well, okay. You should be fine. How old are you? 18. Then, okay. Then you should be fine to do that. I don't know if the machine wasn't available or what. There, there had to be a reason, but you are fine with your height, your weight, everything. I can tell you that right now. In blood drives, do they usually bring iodine just in case people have an allergic reaction? We actually bring a new kind of swab where we don't use the iodine because we had people allergic to that. So everybody, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah so we, we do have that now, so you won't have to worry about that. Yeah. Did the pandemic majorly affect how much blood you guys got? Oh, yes. We struggled a lot during that time frame. What we had more of is more community drives where people would come out and donate, but like a lot of our, you know, our schools were kind of, they're not, they weren't in session or they were doing, you know, from home learning. Yes, it did affect us quite a bit, absolutely. A lot of routine surgeries were postponed until after it because we had to depend on the blood supply we had to help with emergency situations. Do you ever take more than one or two pints? No, uh, you can donate, besides doing the Power Red, you can donate blood every 56 days. We also have another program that's called apheresis. It's where we only take the platelet portion of your blood. You can do that like every two weeks, but we do not recommend that. Unless you would match up with a patient, we do not do that because we don't want, you know, you to get kind of burnt out on that. It's a two hour procedure and you have to go to our office to do that. And right now we just have them in downtown Louisville and our East End location. But apheresis is very important because the shelf life of platelets is five days where we have two days caught up in testing and within three, three those three additional days, we're putting them in a patient. So that's a great question. Yeah. How much blood does it take to do damage to your body? Do what? How much blood do you have to lose to do damage to your body? Well, I mean, I would say probably, you know, depending on what your medical situation is and how quick your hemoglobin drops. We don't want a hemoglobin ever under six, but, you know, again, that would depend on your doctor and your medical condition. Well, that's part of your medical history. We'll ask you what sorts of medications and stuff. We do take most medications. Uh, typical for high school students is antibiotics. If you're being treated for an infection, 
we will tell you not to donate because that infection could be passed on and you need your blood to help you recover. Uh, antidepressants, we take, we take most medications. A lot of times people think we don't. We actually will take blood from a diabetic, even if they're insulin dependent, as long as their blood sugars aren't up and down. We want a stable blood sugar. Again, every individual is different. That's why you go through that mini physical and we ask all those questions. But that's a great question as well. So the people who uh, dry blood. Are those volunteers as well? Absolutely not. Everybody, and that's a great question. Everybody who donates blood is being taken care of by a medical professional who is trained by the Red Cross. They are paid staff. And that's a great question because we get asked that a lot. Or people say, that's really nice of you all to come out and do this. No, our staff is all paid and trained. So great questions. Um, so with like, I know tattoos don't go any like further than like the, like the epidermis, but I know that like some people have tattoos like really close or even like on their inner elbows. Sure, that's a great question. Tattoos are fine, no matter where they're at, as long as they're done by a licensed facility. Most places are licensed, but say for example, somebody you know does tattoos and they're gonna come to your house and do it, make them some extra money and you get a discount. Once they go out of their environment at their job, their sterile environment, it's not considered a licensed facility. Even though they're licensed in their facility, they're not licensed when they're doing it in somebody's home. And they, they do that all the time. I mean, that's nothing uncommon, but no. And you can do that. Even if you had a tattoo, say this morning, you could donate this afternoon as long as it was done in a licensed facility. That's another great question we get asked a lot, especially with the younger generation and, and all of the military. A lot of military get tattoos quite regularly. I cover Fort Knox. So, uh, but no, that used to be a deferral and now it's not. If they get it in a non-licensed facility, they have to wait, I believe it's a year. I just didn't know because, like, I know some people will get tattoos, like, right here on that spot. It's all based on feel. From somebody, I used to stick, so I'm very familiar with it. You, you should be able to feel the vein. You shouldn't have to see it. You should, the way we're trained is you will feel, and then you'll, you, we mark the vein. So when somebody comes in, they'll sign in. They'll do their medical history. We do have it Well, we have a thing called Rapid Pass where you can actually answer your questions online. High school kids like that because you're fast as you know what on a phone and you can get it done in no time. And then when you're taken over to the bed, if you pass that, we do an iodine scrub on your arm that takes about 30 seconds. Actual donation with the needle in your arm takes five to seven minutes. It's a tiny little pinch and that pinch could give someone else an entire lifetime. So that's what I tell you all. A little pinch is nothing compared to what some of our recipients have had to go through. So we t I tell people all the time, you should always, if you can, donate because you never know when it could be you or someone in your family who needs blood. Um, what if you could like see if I'm I'll be very honest, if we have it where you look like somebody that, See, what we, we would struggle with, we're not going to stick you. We're just going to say, and that doesn't mean something's wrong with you. Some people just have very tiny veins, and we're just going to say you can't donate. Um, what does the iron count have to be? Because I have kind of For females, I think it has to be 12.5. Does it have anything to do with your height and weight, or it's just? Your iron count does not, and that is fine. What I would suggest if you're wanting to donate is about a week prior to donating, like since the blood drives in a couple of weeks, just start eating like green leafy vegetables, red meat. A lot of people don't encourage you to eat liver. I wouldn't think about it, but uh, red, you know, green leafy vegetables, iron enriched food. A lot of people will take iron supplements if they feel like they have a low iron. So, sure. Speaking of like iron supplements, Let's say you take like a lot of vitamins and stuff like that, mm -hmm. like magnesium or whatever, would that have any effect on your blood or anything? Mm. And again, anything like that that you have questions about, our staff will answer the day of. 
your safety as a donor comes before anything. And we would never take blood from anyone if it's not safe for them to donate. That's why we check everybody's iron count. Uh, why do you have to wait till the age of 16? That's just the state laws that are mandated for us through uh, the FDA. No, it's the FDA that makes those decisions and we just follow their guidelines. How do you go about volunteering? Uh, as far as for the blood drive or just in general? Just in general. Uh, you can contact redcrossblood.org or redcross.org and that'll tell you, know, you can think about what area you would like to volunteer in and then they can tell you. And is volunteering on our time or yours? whatever you can do depend we'd have to match up like what's your availability we're going to do whatever we can to get you to volunteer so it pretty much be on your schedule and what we had available so i promise you we'd find you something <laughs> through the website yes just click volunteers needed it took you to those applications there you go and they run a check on everybody so don't think it's because you're a high school student everybody goes through the same qualifications do you have to go through schooling in order to work? To learn to stick and stuff? Yeah. As far as drawing blood, actually, the Red Cross trains you. We do get a lot of uh, staff from hospitals, phlebotomists and stuff, but the Red Cross will train you. When I came here 35 years ago, I started out on our collections team as a phlebotomist, and it's different from a hospital setting for, to the Red Cross. So I got to learn both. And so they're, the training they give you is very thorough. And I felt very comfortable after I was finished with it to go, because the needles are a little bit bigger than what they use at a hospital because we're taking an entire pint. But again, it's a little pinch that gives somebody else a lifetime. You know, after I, I was a blood donor before we found out I had a blood disease. And uh, I'll never forget, I had donated multiple times and I got a call about a young man who was uh, involved in an accident downtown. Young African-American boy and something about our blood panels matched exactly. Well, I had no idea. So they called and said, can you come in and donate within the next few days? You're eligible. Well, I couldn't get there quick enough because I thought, wow, that's really important. We have a system in place where you can actually on your phone download an app you can track where your unit goes. It's not gonna tell you the name of the person, but it will tell you like usually like the city and the state and like who the recipients, like their medical background, like a, your blood went to a heart transplant, your blood went to someone who was going through, you know, cancer treatment. So there is actually something that makes you, you know, gives you that really good feeling of, I really am helping somebody. But I promise you, we use every unit we get every day because we need it so desperately. If you're like already phlebotomy certified, do you have to like do it all over again through Red Cross? You have to go through our training. Just because of phlebotomy, people who've already been trained, it might come a little bit easier for you. But no, and we will train you. And it's just, the, you know, I'd say it's about an eight-week training. But just to go through medical histories, and we allow you to do more things. So we're there to support you and make you feel comfortable before we just send you. You know what I'm saying? Just send you out there. Okay. Um, when do you do your CPR classes? What I'd have you do is get online to look for that because they're all the time. And I don't want to give you specifics because it depends on where you live and when they're doing them. <laughs> okay. What's the lowest hemoglobin you've seen? You have to realize I worked at a hospital, okay? It has nothing to do with me being at the Red Cross. Probably four, and that's pretty low. But again, I'm sure there's been some maybe a little lower than that, but again, there, if, if somebody's got a hemoglobin of four, they're gonna give them the units they need to get them where they need to be. Any other questions? Yeah. Would you say you will respond to disasters or accidents more? Disasters. Disasters. Most of the time, we, well, like fires and stuff, that's a routine thing for us. We go to that. But most of the disasters are, you know, pretty big disasters. Fires were there. 
to help the family get to where they need to be and then we're out of the picture. You know what I'm saying? Insurance takes over or, you know, they get the help that they need. We don't abandon them or anything. Any other questions? Hmm. Oh, oh yeah. here we go. <laughs> the, uh, the link to the website I put on Google Classroom, so every bit of this Thank is you. easy, very easy. Yeah, anything you want to search for, I think you can just hit it in the search bar and it'll tell you right where to go. So, uh, like, how do you raise enough money to like, do all that? To do what? Like, 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 blood and everything. How does the Red Cross, how does it exist? Is it through donations? The Red Cross is mostly based on donations through companies. We have actually our chapter side of the building, they have an entire fundraising department that does all of that stuff any of that again i'm more with the blood services team but any information like that you can go online and look it up and it'll all be there and you know and if you have any other particular questions about it i can give you my card and i can let you you can call me and i can see who in our fundraising department can get you the information that you need anything else well y'all been a great group lots of questions and Hopefully, I want to see more of you at the blood drive, so please sign up if you can. I promise it's you it's a very safe and simple process. That's how long does it take um, to, if they're donating blood here? Like how many? 45 minutes 45 to an hour. Yeah. 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 It, you know, it, yeah. During the school day, again, I think we they check to make sure it's a class you can feel comfortable missing. But just remember in that uh, hour, 45 minutes to an hour, you help save the lives of three people. So, any other questions about anything that I haven't answered you want to know? Again, our website is overloaded with information that you may need. So, feel free to look at any of that. And then if you have any questions, just reach out. I'll leave my card. And if I can't answer you, I will surely find out who can. So, all right. Thank you. Well, good. I hope so. I hope so. Very attentive. Thank y'all so much. And if you ever need anything, let me give you my card. So, and feel free. They.